The layout of keys on the modern day Latin based keyboards is QWERTY, though if you were born in the 90s, you may know it more as ASDF. But have you ever wondered why this layout was chosen? Even back when typewriters were invented, everybody was taught the alphabetic order, so why not use that? And why do some countries like France and Germany have different arrangements than English speaking countries do? Well, almost everything about the way the keys are arranged on the keyboard has to do with two things. Either the intention of making it easier to type on your fingers or to prevent typewriters from jamming. Let's start with the fact that the keys are offset. Why not just a nice even rectangle? Well, let's look at how a typewriter functions. Each key is attached to a bar which runs underneath it to what is called a striker. The striker is the part with a letter imprint that hits the ink imprint into the paper. Each striker is connected to the key with the respective letter on it, and they're arranged in a sort of crescent shape. Because of this, each of the bars from the keys has to be offset a bit. If they were aligned, the bars that connect to the strikers would run into each other. And even with each row being elevated differently, they'd have to compete for space, which isn't good. And this also leads us to understanding why these letters are arranged in the positions they are. When choosing the layout of letters on the keyboard, the creators followed two rules. Try to have letters which commonly appear next to each other in words, on different sides of the keyboard, and have them not appear in the same column. There was a mechanical reason for this and also a user-friendly one. Let's start with the mechanical. Notice that the bars which connect the keys to the strikers are arranged sequentially by the column of the keys rather than the row of the keys. So not including the number keys, these six strikers match up with these six keys in this order and then the next three like this, and so on and so forth. And while the strikers themselves are arranged in this crescent shape when they're at rest, once swung, they all end up in the same space, because that's where you're typing. This means that hitting two keys at the same time cannot be done, as the striker arms would hit each other and cause a jam. And even after the key is released, it takes a moment for that striker arm to return to its resting position. This means that a jam can also occur if two strikers are activated in quick succession especially if those two strikers are next to each other. As you can see here, the closer they are, the more overlap space they have. Because of this, the people designing the key layout wanted to make sure that letters which commonly appear next to each other in English words are not connected to adjacent strikers, which means that on the keyboard they aren't found in the same column. For example, when was the last time you saw T, G, and B occur in a sequence, backwards or forwards? It really doesn't ever happen in English words, or Y, H, N, or W, S, X. Q, which is almost always followed by a U, are on opposite sides of the keyboard, and so on and so forth. It was also ideal for letters that commonly occur together to be found on opposite sides of the keyboard, because striking arms that are on opposite ends of this crescent shape have very little overlap space. For example, the word anti-disestablishmentarianism mostly bounces back and forth between the left and right hand, as you can see here, and it doesn't have a single instance where two letters are in adjacent strikers. As luck would have it, both of these rules, that is, alternating between two hands as much as possible and never having two in the same column, are also very helpful for the typist. Alternating between hands is ideal because while one is pressing the key, the other can move into position. And since each finger is more or less assigned to one column of keys, not having to hit two letters in the same column is ideal. On your keyboard right now, try to hit WSX or UJM in quick succession. There just isn't really a good way to do this other than lifting up your finger each time. In contrast, type AJE or WIN. It's much easier to be able to alternate between hands or at least alternate between fingers. So going back to the problem of striker arms overlapping, the QWERTY layout results in the linear sequence of strikers to follow this pattern. Really not a whole lot of examples here where any of the adjacent letters would be typed back to back. In contrast, had keyboards been arranged alphabetically like this, the resulting pattern of striker arms would be this. Very unideal because it has a ton of adjacent letters that are very commonly found in words, such as W and E, I and S, and even three sequence letters like B, L, U, used in words like blue, blunt, or blunder. Even worse than that, the typing layout would be pretty unfriendly to the hands. The most commonly used letters at the time in the English language were E, T, and A. The T on this keyboard is in one of the most awkward positions to reach, forcing you to bend your pinky, the least articulate finger, inwards and down. On a QWERTY keyboard, you can reach T by moving the index finger, which is the most articulate finger, 
up and forwards. Much better. Meanwhile, the left hand pinky only has to move to hit Q or Z, both very uncommon letters. Otherwise, it gets to rest nicely on the A key, so you never have to move it. It's much easier to press your pinky down where it's resting than to have to move it and relocate it and press again. To give some number context here, key accounts for almost 7% of everything we type. Q and Z each account for only 0.2%, so putting the T in the easier location is a no-brainer. And then of course there's the thumbs, which aren't really good at poking, but can be pressed downwards easily enough where they're currently resting. Because the thumb articulates this way, but not so much this way. This makes them perfect for the spacebar. Now, of course, with the invention of computers, the mechanical element of keyboards was no longer a hindrance, meaning it could have been possible to redesign the keyboard layout entirely for optimal typing speeds. And people did just that. The Dvorak layout, for example, looks like this, and to this day, many people swear by its efficiency, and some people do in fact prefer this layout. The most common letters as of 1995 in the English language are E, A, R, I, O, T, N, S. These letters account for 60% of everything that we type, and with the exception of R, all of these keys are on the home row, that being the middle section where your hands are constantly at rest. This means that you very rarely have to move your fingers from the home row, you just have to press them down where they're already resting. The least common letters, however, are Q, J, Z, X, V, and K. Together, these account for only 3% of what we type. Q, J, and Z are located in the most awkward areas, as these together account for less than 1% of what we type, while X, V, and K are also relegated to the relatively awkward spots. Every single one of the vowels is located under the left hand. And because vowels and consonants tend to bounce back and forth between each other, there's a lot of alternating between hands. Another layout is the Colmac layout, which is a minor modification to the QWERTY layout, as well as the Azerty layout, which was designed for typewriter users of the French and Belgian languages. These languages have notably different character frequency than English, so Azerty was introduced for typewriters and is still used by some people to this day. The Quartz layout was made for the same reason for the German language. The main difference here being that Z is much more common in German than it is in English, while Y is far less common. So the two are flipped. For languages not based in Latin style letters, the adoption of keyboards was a difficult task, particularly for Asian languages, which tend to not follow a simple linear character system, but one more based on modification. Mandarin Chinese was the most difficult as the written characters are almost entirely based off of non-linear arrangements and modifiers. This resulted in keyboards that looked like this, and this, and this. This made typing difficult to say the least, and writing computer code almost impossible, as computer code really likes things to be linear. I'm not going to pretend to know all the intricacies of why the Chinese language works this way, but the point is it was very difficult to make a typing system that worked for it. As a result of this, a new version of Chinese writing, known as Simplified Chinese, was developed. This allowed for more reasonable keyboards to be developed, and also allowed for computer code to be interpreted in a way that Chinese speakers could interact with. As always, I hope I helped, and thank you for watching. Liking, subscribing, and commenting are a great way to help this channel grow, and I'll see you next time.